Have the Patriots locked themselves into a decision with the number three pick in the NFL draft? That's where we start today's show. My name is Harrison Graham. Thanks to everybody for clicking on today's episode of Patriots Today by Chat Sports. Is New England going to take a quarterback at number three overall? More reports on that that we'll discuss. But listen, we made it. It's draft week, finally. All the rumors, reports that we'll continue to discuss leading up to Thursday, it's all about to end. We're all about to find out what was true, what wasn't, what New England decides to do. Perfect time to subscribe to the channel. Don't miss a thing. Uh, we're trying to get to 11,000 subs ASAP. If you want Patriots content on the daily for free, we are the channel for you. Mike Reese tapped in, ESPN Pat's reporter, saying the most likely scenario per sources remains that the Patriots will stay put at number three and select LSU's Jaden Daniels, North Carolina's Drake May, or Michigan's J.J. McCarthy. So now, barring an unexpected blockbuster trade offer, according to sources, the Patriots will move forward with a plan that has been months in the works, getting a quarterback. And look... I'm sure the Patriots have gotten trade offers. I'm sure they'll continue to. I'm sure in the moment, in real time, they will as well. But unless there is one that overwhelms Elliot Wolf, it just seems like they're going to stay put. Now, could they, you know, be leaking it to the media? Yeah, we're staying put to maybe try and drive up that price one last time the week of the draft. We know teams get desperate last minute. Maybe, who knows? That's why I said uh, on Thursday, we'll know one way or the other. But it does seem that the Patriots are at least comfortable, uh, to use uh, Elliot Wolf's words from last week, of selecting a quarterback with that third pick. Now, Adam Schefter added this as well, saying that New England is still more likely than not to make the pick at three, and it's up to a team this week to change the Patriots' mind, which could happen. So again... You know, you get that feeling that the door still, still could be cracked open, but a team's going to have to knock it down uh, to, to get it done, right? Like, clearly up to this point, the Patriots have not received an offer from Minnesota or whoever uh, good enough to move off of that pick before the night of the draft. And I do feel confident in saying that. I do not think this pick gets traded if it does before draft night. If it happens, it will happen in the moment, in real time, uh, a team will get desperate. Minnesota will call one more time and make an offer. And if the Patriots decide to budge, it'll be right then and there because they maximized value. Uh, it will not happen before Thursday if it happens at all, which at this point seems at least more likely than not uh, that they will keep that pick. Pat McAfee uh, getting this uh, from Schefter today saying the two teams that have expressed the most interest in moving up have been the Vikings and Giants. The most likely scenario is that the commanders stay at number two and take Jaden Daniels. A couple of takeaways, and I think uh, this first one has, um, or the first part of the first one's been clear for a little while. Um, I think it's pretty clear the Vikings want Drake May, which is why I'm still not ruling out a night of the draft. Minnesota just gets otherworldly desperate and makes New England a huge offer, then Elliott Wolf has to make a decision. Um, and then, you know, it seems like the Giants do like J.J. McCarthy. I, I think that one's uh, a little less clear. But I do think, I will say this, I do think the Giants want a quarterback, even though they've acted like they don't. Um, are the Patriots convicted? Are they convinced May is that guy? Or are the reports true that Elliot Wolf really likes J.J. McCarthy? Which, you guys know where I stand. I prefer May for a number of reasons. He's more experienced. He's played more. He's had to play in higher scoring games where his team has asked him to drop back time and time again and deliver the football. Has it always led to wins? No, but J.J. McCarthy has kind of been an advanced bus driver uh, at Michigan. And uh, make no mistake, just because McCarthy played in more games, um, they were both two-year starters, and McCarthy, uh, A, his freshman year, was hardly used as a thrower at all. And B, the last two years, Drake May has far uh, out gained in terms of just reps of throwing the football, and I think the statistics prove that out that right there on your screen, that he has more valuable reps uh, throwing the football, especially in late-game situations. Okay, pick a quarterback. Who would you rather have, DM for Drake May or JJ for JJ McCarthy? This, of course, assuming that Jaden Daniels is the pick at two, which I still think he will be, but the commander's rumors have been a, a little wild the last 72 hours. DM for May or JJ for JJ McCarthy? I do think it would be a mistake to go McCarthy. Um, 
at least at three. If you really like them, then hey, you know, if you want to trade down, and then you know, with Minnesota at three and trade back up in front of New York at six, try to pull off that double maneuver, kind of like the Cardinals did last year for Paris Johnson. Hey, uh, I, I, I'm not. You know, completely against that. I still don't think McCarthy's even worth a top 10 pick, but I think he'll go that high because of the quarterback tax. But I just think Drake May's physical attributes uh, and upside are more worthy of taking at number three overall. We'll see if the Patriots agree with me. Uh, but uh, again, we're going to find out in about three days. And I'll add this as well. I do think that if Jaden Daniels got the three, they would almost take him no matter what, which again, I still like May more. But it seems like the NFL disagrees with me, and uh, the Patriots are one of those teams that they would prefer to have Jaden Daniels. At least that's kind of how I'm reading it. All right, today's show is sponsored by Game Time. You know what sucks? Not being able to go to games, sporting events, concerts with your friends because you couldn't find a reasonable price for a ticket or you had trouble purchasing them online because the ticket provider was, you know, kind of a pain in the you-know-what. You couldn't navigate the app well. Well, no more trouble because GameTime's app is very easy to navigate. They give you the best prices available. And what they specialize in is day of deals. Like you wake up on a Saturday morning and you say, hey, I want to go watch the Celtics. You're going to find the best prices available. The Celtics are in the playoffs. The Red Sox are underway. The Bruins are in the playoffs as well. No better time to download the GameTime app and go out and have some fun uh, by watching your favorite sporting teams, concerts, bands, uh, et cetera. Game time is going to get you the best deal available. Trust me on that one. Again, their specialty is last minute tickets, flash deals, and zone deals. And we got a deal for you. When you download the Game Time app, search your app store Game Time. There's also a link in the comments and the description. Use promo code chat sports. That's going to get you $20 off your first purchase with Game Time. Head out to Fenway Park, wherever you want to go watch uh, your favorite events and uh, use the promo code chat sports. Get $20 off. Trust me, you're not going to regret it. I've used Game Time the day of many a times and uh, saved myself a lot of money uh, if I had uh, buy or, uh, purchased earlier. I waited till the last minute and uh, got that best deal available. It's Game Time. Promo code chat sports. Go check it out. Okay, um, I kind of teased this. Jaden Daniels, is that who the Patriots have as their top quarterback? Here is Adam Schefter on that. He said, I still think Jaden Daniels is the favorite to be number two. If he goes to three, the price of three goes up a lot. But I think the commanders in the end will opt for Daniels. That's my read on it. And, you know, maybe we're connecting too many dots here. Maybe we're not. But it's kind of what I said earlier, right? I do think the Patriots really like Daniels. And if he was there, they'd feel really comfortable taking him. But also, they would probably get more calls. And if what I said earlier is correct, that the NFL likes Daniels more than May, if Washington did pivot to May here at the last second and Daniels got the three, then a trade down might even drive more value for New England, especially if they do like J.J. McCarthy, which, again, I think that'd be a mistake to take him over May or Daniels. Uh, but uh, I, I do think the Patriots probably have Daniels higher on their board than Drake May. If I had to guess, it's something like this where it's Caleb one. Again, that's not going to happen. Daniels two, slight drop off, and then May – and McCarthy probably really close. Hopefully they have May higher. Uh, and then probably a distant drop to Michael Penix, which would be in a trade down scenario, or whatever the case may be. Listen, Daniels has had a meteoric rise. There's no question about it. Uh, kind of a fringe draft pick after his three years at Arizona State. Would have been a day three pick after his first season at LSU. And then last year comes back to school and turns himself into an undisputed top five pick. I mean, good for him. Uh, I still think the upside and the physical attributes Drake May has uh, is why I would take him higher. But I understand why teams like uh, Daniels, five years of experience. He is a elite dynamic runner. He throws with great touch on the deep ball. Uh, he's accurate. I, you know, I have questions about durability with that frame uh, and his willingness to throw over the middle. But every other part of his game is pretty damn good. And uh, his floor is definitely higher than May's, which is why I think some teams are enticed. Do you want Jaden Daniels in New England? Type Y for yes, or you can type N for no. I'd be totally cool with it. I'd rather have Drake May, but uh, I am not against Jaden Daniels at all. Uh, y for yes, or N for no when it comes to Daniels. Now, our main Chat Sports YouTube channel is going to be live for every single pick of the NFL draft. We'll, of course, cover Patriots picks here on Patriots Today. 
But if you want to have wall-to-wall coverage of the 2024 NFL Drafts, if you like keeping up with what's going on with all teams, go check out Chat Sports. That's our day one thumbnail there. So when you see that when you're on YouTube, you'll know you're in the right place. Go subscribe over there. Turn on the notifications. We'll be live, I think, two hours before draft time on Thursday. So it uh, should be a whole lot of fun. All right, uh, before we wrap up here, are the Patriots eyeing some wide receivers at 34? Well, if they take a QB at three, then going receiver on day two makes a whole lot of sense. And three players that uh, have been linked to New England at 34 are as follows. Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina, Keon Coleman out of Florida State, Ricky Pearsall out of Florida. And what's interesting is these three guys are kind of all different. There's not a ton of overlap uh, in their games. Uh, I really like Pearsall, and he's been rising for me. Um, for being 6'1", about 190, he's got a really good catch radius, strong hands. He had one of the craziest catches in college football. I mean, if you search Ricky Pearsall catch on YouTube or Twitter, you're going to find it. It's a sick one-hander. Um, I've got him up to my number nine receiver in the draft, and quite frankly, after the top five, you could really top me into any of those other guys as number six there. I like Leggett a little more because he's so good after the catch, and I think he can help a young quarterback out earlier on just by getting him the ball in space. But I think Pearsall's probably a better route runner. He's got stronger hands. Just a different type of player uh, than um, Leggett is. Obviously, Keon Coleman, more of that boundary, jump ball, one-on-one -on -one physical specimen. Uh, I just worry about his ability to separate, which is not an issue with Pearsall at all. He separates the best out of these three guys. So that is the interesting thing about these three old players. I'd be interested to see how the Patriots rank them on their big board because it's kind of a pick your flavor. They all do a little bit something different. But Pearsall's been a guy I've kind of watched more late in the process, and uh, he's a dog, man. He's a really, really fun player. All right. When we talk to you next, it'll be two days away from the NFL draft. So keep it locked in here. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit the notification bell. We'll see you guys next time. See you guys next time on Patriots Today.